All right, 36 and 48. Let's go ahead and factor these out. Now, remember, you might not do it the exact same way I do, but as long as you end up with the same numbers at the end, you're good to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead for 36, and I'm going to say 6 times 6 is 36. No prime numbers there, so I need to factor 6 out into 2 times 3, and this factors out to 2 times 3. And when it's all said and done, I have all prime numbers here at the end, it's all said and done. So I'm going to write down 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And again, it's very important that when you rewrite that prime factorization at the end, you put them all in order from least to greatest. Let's try 48. All right? I'm going to go with uh, 2 times 24 for this one to start with. Excuse me. 2 is a prime number. 24, I'm going to say, uh, okay, let's do 2 times 12. 2 is a prime number. Let's factor out 12. 6 times 2. 2 is a prime number. And let's factor out 6 is 2 times 3, which those are both prime numbers. So now when I look at this, I'm writing this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. You'll notice there's 1, 2, 3, 4 twos, and a 3. Now at this point, we don't have a greatest common factor because we already said once that it was 12. And here we've just got a bunch of multiplication problems. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to rewrite this using what they have in common. All right. So if I look at this, I can see right off the bat that both of these have at least one 3. I can also see that both of these have two 2's. Now, what's left over here? There's a 3. So we're not going to worry about that because that's still that's left over and it doesn't match the other side. What's left over here is that there's another two twos. We're not going to worry about that because it doesn't match what's on the other side. We're only concerned with what matches, and that's a two times a two times a three. Now, if you go through and you do this, two times two is four, and four times three then is twelve. Let's go back and look. When we did this with the list, we said that 12 was the greatest common factor. We did this with prime factorization. We came up with 12 being the greatest common factor. Remember, when you write these down here at the bottom, only include what both factorizations have in common. Only include what both factorizations have in common. Well, let's take a look at the next example. We're going to find the greatest common factor of 16 and 56 using prime factorization again. Going back to our last example, 16 and 56, we determined it was 8. So that's what we're hoping for when we're all said and done here. All right, 16 and 56. Factoring out 16, I'm going to go 4 and 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Those are not prime, so I need to factor those out again to 2 times 2 and 2 times 2. And, lucky me, I've ended with all prime numbers, so that one's all done. This would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Let's factor 56. I'm going to say 8 times 7. Well, 7 is prime, but 8 needs to be factored out as to 4 times 2. 2 is prime. 4 needs to be factored out as 2 times 2. And now I finish with prime numbers. So I would write this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Let's look at what they have in common. I see three twos over here. I see three twos over here. Now, on this side, we've got this two. That doesn't matter because it doesn't match the other side. Same with over here, this seven. There's a seven there, but in this case, it doesn't matter because it doesn't match. We're only worried about two times two times two. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Now, go back to our list before. We figured out the greatest common factor was 8. So it works. We solved it. One of the other things I'll show you that some people do, and I've done this from time to time, it works, but if you go and you actually write these prime factorizations on top of each other, you can actually circle and say, okay, that's in common, that's in common, and that's in common as well. So then you would know to write 2 times 2 times 2, which, again, equals 8. 
another way to do it. Just another way. Some people are more visually uh, inclined to do it that way because they like to see those things match up nice and neat. If you can just look at each side and say that's what matches up, great. But if you need to, use this method because sometimes it'll help you identify very easy visually what numbers match up. All right. It's your turn to try it. You're going to try using 20 and 25 and find the prime factorization. Now, remember, when we did this, you figured out that it was 5. Let's see if that ends up being the case here. Go ahead and hit pause, do the prime factorization of 20 and 25, and see if you can find the greatest common factor. All right, let's see how you did. Now, remember, when we do prime factorization, it doesn't matter how you start it. What matters is how you end it. Okay? So if you choose a different way to, to start the factorization of 20 or 25 than me, that's fine as long as the numbers at the end match up. For example, I'm going to go ahead and say 4 times 5. Now some of you might have said, well, I did 2 times 10. That's okay as long as the numbers mat match up at the end. 5 is a prime number, so I need to factor out 4 to 2 times 2. And I'm left with 2 times 2 times 5. Now let's take a look over here at 25. To factor it out, I'm going to use 5 times 5. Prime number, prime number. So my actual factorization is 5 times 5. Now looking at that, what do those two sets of numbers, those two factorizations have in common? There's a 5 here, there's a 5 here. Now before when we've done this, there's been three numbers to multiply together there. There's been three numbers to multiply together here. But in this case, there's only one. And sometimes that's how it'll be. When you get down to the end, if there's only one number that they have in common, it's just that number. The prime, uh, the uh, greatest common factor of these two then is just five. Sometimes that's going to happen. Now, what if you get down to the end of your list or the end of your prime factorization and at the end of your list, there's only one number, like the number one matches up, or there's no numbers in your prime factorization that match up. If you ever get to that situation, here's how it is. Okay? Let's say that I do uh, 14 and 25. Okay? If I did this as a list way, I'd do 1, 2, 7, 14, 1, 5, 25. Notice there's only two numbers that match, and that's one. There are some instances where you're going to have numbers that their greatest common factor is, in fact, one, because nothing else matches up. These two numbers then are considered to be called relatively prime, meaning that together, when you look at their common factors, one is the only number that they share. If I did the same thing with these two numbers, and I, but I did prime factorization, okay? I'm going to end up with 5 times 5 here, like we did the last time. Those are both prime. I'm going to end up with 2 times 7 here. Those are both prime. If you ever end up with, at the end of your prime factorization, here I have 2 times 7. Here I have 5 times 5. Notice, nothing matches. And so if nothing matches, that's a dead giveaway then that you have 1 is your greatest common factor. As always, if you need any extra help, stop in to see me before school, after school, or during lunch. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit from this, and uh, we'll see you later.